All India Cotton FPO Association. He is qualified as a textile technologist and a marketing expert having an experience of over 33 years in the agro and textile industry. That's bloody long. He is first and the only Indian to be registered as chartered valuer, specializing in cotton fiber, yarn and fabrics by the Institute of Valuers and the Indian Institution of Valuers in India. He is currently the managing director of Cotton Guru Group, a company run by his family since 1903, 120 years. Okay, so Manish, you heard Davo's story. What elements do you recognize from your experience working with the farmers here in India? And what would you say are some of the differences? Thank you, Babuji. That is what I will call you. And सबसे पहले भारत के सभी किसानों को मेरा साधन नमन। Without you, we all wouldn't be here. Anything that we do, but like blood and food, cotton cannot be produced in the laboratory. It has to be produced in the farm. Before I start something, just I am trying to summarize the essence of this beautiful program that we are all attending today. It's a Sanskrit Loka that would like to, I would like to recite. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukha Bhag Bhave Om Shanti 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 Together only we can grow if we need respect, we need to give respect. If we want success, we need to ensure the success of people around us. And that is what this organic ecosystem is all about. We cannot survive alone. We cannot grow alone. We cannot progress alone. And if we do that, it will not sustain for a long time. And we are all here to address issues and solutions and what, or on, or what we have experienced or in the fear of experiencing. Disability, transparency, everything that has been discussed. It has to be an ecosystem. The accountability must not fall on the weakest segment. That is the power. We certify the soil in organ. We do not certify humans. We should keep that in mind. The whole certification process is for the soil. And then comes the product. And then comes the practice behind the product. The organic certification system is getting stranger and stranger, stricter and stricter. I don't mind that. It may be to the need of the oven, yes. But does the onus have to fall on the weakest segment? What are we doing actually to empower those farmers? Ensure that they understand what we mean to say. They are aligned to what we want to say. And they are feeling this essence of belonging or a sense of partnership. This is where uh, I would like to answer, you know, what uh, is uh, left by Davo. Is that I was invited by the ICAC to uh, South Asian uh, countries cotton forum in Mozambique last year. They wanted to know how, not how we are doing organic, that so many people would say, but how do we deal with farmers? How do we ensure sustained sustainability and retention of the farmers? How do we ensure a smooth transition of the farmers? So that is where I explained the structure that we worked on. And it has not come easy, it has come with a lot of trials and errors. But now we have a structure in place. We have a set of farmers. We used to make clusters to way back in 2007 to 2010 when we started our journey in organic. 2010 onward we understood that clusters still need a more organized format. And in 2017 we identified FPO, a farmer producer organization. It is a registered company of farmers. Only farmers can become members and only they can become shareholders. So we formed, started forming FPOs and we started engaging FPOs within our supply chain. 
and that was step two. First the farmers, then clusters of self-help group, also women self-help groups, converting them into FPOs. The journey began with another set of trials and errors that individual FPOs were not enabled or they were not actually, they did not have the capacity or the learning capacity to get into business immediately. Once you get into a contract with a buyer, there are so many things they need to understand. Contract sanctity, one thing, and the delivery, costing, budgeting, and the strategizing, implementation. They are farmers who are part of the FPO. So what do we do there? Then I started reading what has been done and I came across a reference study. Past, present, and future of farmer producer organization. All of you must read that. It is Azim Prem University. A fantastic article. I went through that eight to ten times to realize what, what we were missing, what was that something we were not doing which we ought to do. And then what was a case study for us to do that. And the case study was Amul. The first cooperative of India turned into a corporate, formed way back in 1946, still surviving and doing great. So these two case studies and different studies helped us realize that there was no structure of farmers in India. And that is where we started aggregating farmers, making them shareholders and making a federation of farmers who was specializing in implementation and marketing. Only that federation would look into that factor. Not every FPO, not every individual farmer, they are not supposed to. They are supposed to do farming. The FPOs are supposed to link us to those farmers and they are supposed to understand what we mean to say. So that was the federation. Above that, we thought that we are still very sage centric. So we formed an association that is the All India Cotton FPO Association working across multiple states because this model has to be replicable, scalable and profitable across India, anywhere that you work with. So that, that came, uh, the association and that was the reason that I was invited to share my views on what we did differently to ensure a smooth transition of farmers from conventional to organic. The first year always is an orientation program. We never engage farmers immediately into a project. Just sharing names, these are the names of 2,000, 5,000 farmers who would be part of your uh, uh, organic supply chain. We will train them, we will do best we can. That is saying more than we can deliver. I don't say we haven't done that. We have tried that in the past. First um, committing and then starting work, but it has failed miserably. And then we realize farmers have to be oriented. Some farmers may have to be omitted. They are not aligned to this thought. They do not want to get into the organic supply chain. They may be omitted. So this orientation has helped a smooth transition. And this, this is the experience and the, these are the case studies that I shared in Africa. That was the reason for them inviting me to come there. Wonderful. I mean, this, this is a kind of case study that we need to understand and try and analyze and take forward. So, but I will come back to you. I have a question for you. But right now, I will ask Srinivasan to talk.